Um, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, honorable person uh, in the desk, um, the director executive of uh, ISC, ROA, uh, all these members, these honorable members, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just a few words to say that, apologizing for being slightly late, uh, but I also some challenge for coming here. So good morning to, to everybody. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here for this uh, important, important conference organized by ISC and the Academy, the National Academy of Science and Technique of Senegal. And I would like to express our deep appreciation for this opportunity uh, to take the floor and share the findings because I'm chairing the high-level panel of emerging technology of African Union. And these findings are aimed to uh, bring sustainable answers to issues we are facing in Africa. So with the fourth industrial revolution, which is in motion, the boundaries between digital, biological, chemical, and physical are more and more broad, resulting in hybrid technologies. And these particularly complex new technologies at the confluence of gene technology, big data, artificial intelligence, new materials, robotics, nanotechnology, and some of them are already present in our daily life. But this technology will shape the future of the world. So despite the disturbing and stressful speed with which these new technologies are evolving and producing deep change in our societies, in Africa, youth is taking the lead. And it's very important. Because we have seen young entrepreneurs who have demonstrated their ability to take the best of these technologies, undertaking and creating new products and markets. We used to hear that tomorrow's world will be in Africa, experts predict. I say yes. Tomorrow will be in Africa, but it's not enough to proclaim it. We need to put in place appropriate strategies in order to take full advantage of scientific advance and technological innovations. And the future is now, so we need to take action. Fortunately, we are in a favorable momentum. And we have every reason, reasons for optimism. In the light of significant progress seen on the continent, achieving important advance in a food production system, relying more and more on high yield seeds and mechanization, building necessary and relevant infrastructures, reducing malaria burden by 45%, making progress also in the use of clean energy. But even more, it is in the field of ICT that Africa has shown its tremendous creativity with these thousands of startups emerging in many countries. And this is under this context. And recognizing these unprecedented opportunities to speed up our development, the African Union Commission and government express the need to accelerate the use of new and emerging technologies in Africa. So the African Union High Level Panel on emerging technologies, APET, have been created in 2017. APET is committed to develop 
around emerging technologies of relevance, scientific assessed reports, offering policy advice, and forging connections between scientists, policy makers, and private sector. Ten technologies have been identified, and four of which were analyzed in detail. These are gene drive for the control and elimination of malaria vector, drone technology for transforming Africa's agriculture, microgrid for access to energy, and artificial intelligence. To facilitate ownership of these emerging technologies, reports have been developed and released. You have some copy on the Secretariat uh, in French, mainly. And these emerging technologies have a potential, potential, very potential impact. They have expected, they are expected to have a potential on the society, on the economy, health, agriculture, environment, transportation, many sectors. And certainly they will be, they will change the way we are doing research. Because some of these new research tools are inventions that do not create or improve a specific product. Instead, they constitute a new way of creating new products with much broader application. And that is the reason why in the panel, we consider that these emerging technologies are platforms, platforms with endless opportunities, similar to what we have seen in Malaysia in 90s with superconductors, which, was, which were the core of the industrial development of this country. And to illustrate my remarks, I will take three examples, three emerging technologies that have been adopted by the African Union. Currently, they are being implemented in some countries. The first one is drone for precision agriculture. With the use of drones, the amount of information acquired thanks to the imagery associated with sensors make it possible to quickly analyze a situation in real time, contextualize it, and take the appropriate decisions. This allows to anticipate and reduce risk. Drones are reliable tools for decision support to optimize farm management thus increasing yields and profit, while helping to protect the environment from pollution. <coughs> These drones have also the potential to facilitate the research practice through new methods of data collecting, accurate and in real time, offering many opportunities to innovate in various sectors. And this new context will open up for scientists in agriculture new paths for more efficiency and more productivity. Thank you. And this, these opportunities are based on a synergetic interaction between various specialists, soil scientists, plant pathologists, agronomists, physiologists, microbiologists, all working on the same platform using same data generated by real-time imagery. However, given the huge amount of data generated by imagery, which scientists have to analyze, the association of drone with machine learning and cloud sourcing will be necessary for even more precision in analysis and speed 
in decision making. The second one, second emerging technology you have identified, is gene drive for control and elimination of malaria diseases vector. Gene drive is an innovation in genetic engineering. It is a biased inheritance system with a high frequency of gene transmission and very much species specific. The gene drive technology have broad application for preventing the spread of vector-borne diseases such as dengue, Lyme, Zika, and malaria. All these are transmitted by insects. And gene drive is a powerful technology for malaria eradication. It is estimated that in a shame of large scale, even 10% of release of the white population could spread enough to eliminate all the population of mosquito in a very short period. So gene drive is a very powerful technology. And this technology holds also a great potential in basic research to understand the functioning of life. And it represents also a wide applica applicable method for many new varieties in agriculture. And will have, is expected to have a great impact on agricultural productivity, on animal health, and animal and human health. With the easiness, the low cost, and less possibilities of modification of genes, along with the ability of genomic database, gene drive could be viewed not only as an innovation that enhances the efficiency of the activity, of the research activity, but has the potential to create a new playbook for innovation. And this technology is considered as an invention of a method of inventing, IMI. So even if gene drive technology raise serious concerns about the safety of ecosystems and species and concern about the ethics of these manipulations, this technology stands to be the most effective today for reducing or eliminating malaria vectors. The third technology I want to talk about is artificial intelligence. <coughs> artificial intelligence has become more mature and encompass diverse fields of research with considerable progress, producing significant impact on the lives of citizens. And with the rapid development of machine learning, big data, cloud sourcing, artificial intelligence offers many applications in the field of education, research, human health, offering experience where the human dimension of care is supplemented by <coughs> automation. And we have also in industry where uh, you have uh, intelligent robots, sophisticated intelligent robots. <laughs> we found IE also in, uh, in uh, finance, banking, in business, by optimizing tools, management, and so on. And all this application of artificial intelligence using machine learning and neural networks hold an important prospect of lowering cost reducing time, enhancing efficiency, and stimulating innovation. And we can consider that this innovation is very disruptive, but also it is very transformative for our modern society. The artificial intelligence is one of the most powerful emerging technology in its 
ability to deeply penetrate, invade our society, and completely change the usual models in all sectors of human life. Furthermore, we self-learning machines or software, artificial intelligence is constantly improving by identifying the gaps, taking steps to close them, and offering more solutions to solve the problem over time. These are the main three, three uh, emerging technologies uh, we have been considering in the panel. Emerging technology in Africa and youth. One thing is to identify and propose relevant emerging technologies. But another thing, and much more important, is to identify key actors to implement these emerging technologies. And African youth and policymakers are the main actors able to create and spur an enabling ecosystem of for innovation. It's important to create this ecosystem if you want to take full advantage of these emerging technologies. And it's amazing to see the incredibility capacity of African youth, not only to absorb, to absorb the innovation, but also the capacity to transform this innovation in order to create new products, new models, more accessible, more inclusive, and at much lower cost. This local answer, based on social and cultural engineering, is the main force for African country to enter in this <coughs> industrial revolution 4.0. And we have many examples in Togo where young entrepreneurs are using 3D printing to produ produce medical prosthesis. In Rwanda, the famous uh, use as drones are used as cargo for blood packet delivery in remote areas. In Kenya, South Africa, Senegal, Nigeria. Intelligence, in, uh, intelligent, artificial intelligence and drone are used by young people, young entrepreneurs to help farmers predict the productivity of their crops. So youth is very creative. And they do not wait for scientists or economists or policymakers to seize technological innovations. They are often in advance. They have been using drones before the government of Rwanda set up a regulation, a new law on drones. So they used to take over, absorbing innovation, creating new models that, needs, that meet the needs of the society. The second thing is policy. Policy have to set up strategic policies for implementation. The role of policymakers is to set up an enabling environment for these startups to develop their ingenuity and steer the need for social and economic transformation. And the impact of technological change on improvement of quality of life for citizens in a country is relying on education, regulatory policy environment. The, tech, the, capaci the capacity of technology absorption by the society, the affordability and accessibility of products in the markets are also important factors. And these important challenges in terms of training, in terms of building relevant infrastructures, research, thoughtful policies for entrepreneurship, for regulation, for communication, and awareness are this challenge we have to face. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Africa is shaping its future. 
trying to build more rational, more inclusive, and sustainable economic models. A future we want to be based on innovation, which have a tremendous power for societal transformation. And it's very challenging. It's very challenging, but it's interesting. But let us remind that every challenge, every challenge is an opportunity that can be realized. Thank you for your attention.